Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. As you may already know, I've been doing a series on my shorts here on YouTube where I draw animals that you recommend to me and we've created a full page spread of a whole bunch of different and colorful animals, completely filling up this entire page and now I'm doing it again, filling up another entire page spread full of animals that you recommend to me. Before I begin, like and subscribe and let's see what animals we can create for today's video. In order to create all of these adorable creatures, I love to use Ohuhu markers. I use these fine liners and specifically in the size 0.5. And then I also love to use their alcohol-based markers as well. I've got this pack here of skin tone colors. And then I also have a pack of a whole bunch of different colors, which are super helpful in creating the animals that I like to create and making them super bright and fun and colorful and just really vibrant on the page. So now it's time to get into the first animal that we are going to be drawing today, which is a whale, thanks to these comments. So I'm starting off by sketching out my design as always, and whales are very hard to draw. Sea creatures in general are pretty hard to draw because they're just very fluid and not shaped at all like land animals. They're very different and unique. But once I had my sketch, now I'm going in with that outliner like I said before, and I'm going ahead and just filling in all of the little details that I already sketched out and just really making sure it's all neat and nice and making sure that I can have a space to color in my complete design. I really wanted to make sure I had this wheel on the right spot on the page. I wanted it to be kind of in between some animals, so I took my time with sketching it out and outlining it to really make sure it was exactly how I wanted it to look before I went in with my colors. I erased before I went in with my Ohuhu markers to have a clean base, and I'm going ahead and starting with gray because whales are mostly gray. This is a humpback whale, so I decided to add in all of the darkest gray tones first just to really make sure I had all of the depth in there and just to kind of map out where everything needed to be in in order to make this look like a whale because depth and dimension is really important in creating shapes. And then I went in with a lighter gray, although this gray kind of looks exactly the same as the other gray. And since I can't stop with just grays, I decided to add in some blue. For the sea creatures, I really like to add in some underwater tones to make it look like they're swimming in the water. So I added in a lot of different shades of blue, including this light pastel blue to really bring it to life and make it look like it was swimming in the ocean. And then after that, it was time for my favorite part which I think really brings all of the drawings to life which is the white gel pen details so I added in just a whole bunch of white gel pen to really highlight some of the areas and make them pop even more and then I labeled that it was drawing number 27 and here's how it turns out it looks so cute on the same page as the dolphin and I think it turned out so good and now it's time for the next drawing of the day which is a Luna moth drawing thanks to all of these comments no I kind of say this about every single one of these animals but Luna moths are also very challenging to draw because they have to be symmetrical. So what I did first to create a symmetrical drawing was put a line down the middle and then I worked on one piece of it at a time. So if I worked on the top right side of the wing, then before I did anything else on the right side, I would go and work on the top left side to really make sure I kept everything symmetrical. And then once I had it mapped out how I liked it, then I went ahead in with my outline and tried to outline everything and be really detailed with this one. I've actually drawn a Luna moth once before for, so I'm kind of trying to outdo myself how I did it the last time. I want to do even better and make it even more detailed and show that I've improved. Once I had all of my drawing mapped out, including these fluffy little antennas, antennae, whatever is on the top of this moth, then it was time to erase and go ahead in with my colors. So for this one, I actually started with brown first and did those little details on it to really add in some of that depth that I was talking about before and to really make sure that I could see where all the dark colors were going to be so I knew how things needed to be constant contrasted in the drawing. So once I mapped out all of the brown pieces, then I actually started off with yellow and did all of those light parts in there and even mapped out some yellow in the wings as well. Even though the wings are going to be mostly green, I really needed the yellow under there to brighten up the green and to make it even warmer of a color. And then after that, I went in with a green very softly all over the wings to achieve the right green that I needed for this Luna Moth. I colored the entire wingspan of the Luna Moth with that same green color, but I I really wanted to add a lot of depth to these ones. So then I took an even warmer and a little bit darker of a green and just really saturated the wings and made them look like they were a little more detailed and kind of see-through and reflective. That was the goal at least. So I took that green and just put it everywhere. And then it was time to add in even more details and finish it off with a little bit more yellow. I decided to make the antennas, antennae, whatever we decided, gold. And then I decided to add in some white gel bend details, which really brought this one to life. This one needed a lot of white 
white gel pen to get the job done and really highlight all of the features that I needed to be highlighted, such as the wings and the veins on the wings. And then I wrote down that this was drawing number 28. And here's how it turned out on the page. And here's a comparison of the moth that I did before to this one. And I've definitely gotten neater. But now it is time for the next drawing, which I was terrified for. It is an iguana thanks to these comments. The reason why I was so scared to do an iguana is just because I don't have a lot of practice drawing lizards or reptiles in general and they have a lot of specific details and they need a lot of specific things in order to look like the creature that they're supposed to look like including a lot of lines just a lot of intention and a lot of ways that are very challenging and hard such as creating scales plus they kind of look like dinosaurs which is a little bit scary and intimidating but anyway once I started sketching out then I was feeling a little bit better and this was a really cool recommendation it was really only recommended by one person but I'll draw whatever animal no matter how many people recommend it or how many times it's liked or anything like that I just pick whatever animal I want to draw and draw them based on you guys recommendations so anybody has a chance to be chosen I just draw whatever I feel like on that day and in that moment so for now we're doing this iguana which very much challenged me but was really cool that I got this recommendation because I really wouldn't probably have drawn this by myself so it's really cool that you guys give me all of these fun and cool animals to draw that really help me practice and push me out of my comfort zone to create art that I never would have created. I also feel like it's been a really cool way to build a community with you guys and get to chat with you a little bit about animals that you like and things like that. It's just really fun to talk back and forth and I've also learned a lot of cool tips from you guys and things like that. So it's been a really cool experience getting to draw these and I always love seeing everybody's comments but now it's time to start coloring the iguana in. So now I'm going in with green first just all over the base and for this one it needs a lot of help to really look like the creature that it's supposed to be imitating. So now I'm going in with a whole bunch of different shades of green and just trying to really create depth and dimension everywhere, trying to make it look like the head is in front of the body. And I'm also trying to add a lot of depth into the scales of this creature as well to really try and make it look prominent. Also adding in a whole bunch of different bumps to kind of make it look scaly. And it was very challenging to do that. I even added in another green to try and add in even more depth, but I just really kept on trying. I decided to add in some thicker lines to help with that illusion of adding in more depth but then after that it was time to label it and add in some highlights so I put highlights all over it to try and really make the scales pop and come out a little bit more and then this creature was done as well and I think it looks so good on the page with the other green creatures but now it's time for the next animal of the day which is a horse thanks to all of these comments a lot of people wanted to see a horse so here it is I wanted to do something a little bit different for this one I wanted to give it a side view instead of doing a front facing view like I normally would do plus I wanted to create kind of a cool composition and have it in between the moth and the iguana here to kind of break those up a little bit so once I had my sketch very detailed and drawn out because horses have a lot of distinct and strong features then I went ahead in with my outline and just kind of outlined the whole thing for now for the hair I just did some strands which looked kind of straggly and strange but that's okay because I correct them later on then I erased and for the colors I decided to do a classic chocolate warm brown horse to really just add in those fun colors I used a dark brown first to really create some structure to the face horses have very structured and specific faces so I wanted some of that to show through and then I started just building up some colors kind of creating a gradient from a dark color to a lighter color by building up my alcohol marker and letting it dry in between layers so I worked on the hair while I let the rest of the face dry and I tried to create in little lines of strands of hair just to kind of make it look super detailed and a little more realistic then I went ahead in with that same color just to give it all a top coat and now it's time to add in some white so I added white lines to the hair and I'm not sure if I just made it look like an old horse by doing that but then I added in some white gel pen detail to the face as well just to make it look fluffy someone asked for a unicorn so we added on this pink little horn for a makeshift unicorn slash horse and here's how it turned out on the page and let me know what you think about this unicorn but anyway now it is time for the last drawing of the day and for this animal I'm going to be drawing a raccoon thanks to these comments so for this one I wanted it to be super cute so I added in little hands and everything which are very hard to draw you know hands are just classically hard to draw but here I am sketching out the entire design and 
I kind of struggled with this one a little bit, especially with the colors, but I just kept working till I got it right. That's really all we can do is just keep trying. And this has been a really fun project to do that with. Like I said, you guys have challenged me to draw a lot of animals that I normally wouldn't even attempt to draw. So this has been a great learning experience. But I had to sketch on the little mask and sketch out the little hands, of course, and just outline everything once I had it all looking the way that I wanted it to. And I was very excited about the colors for this one. So let's jump right into it. I started off with this gray color first just to kind of map out where all of the darker colors needed to be for this guy. I didn't want to mess anything up, especially since their masks are so important. And then I just went ahead and with that same gray all over where I needed it, created some little fur textures and colored in the little fingers. And then it was time to go in with an even darker color just to really bring it in that depth and make sure the raccoon was reading the right colors. They're mostly black and gray, so I really wanted that to read through and not be too light. So I just went ahead in and colored all that in. I decided to add in a little bit of brown just to add in different fur colors and to warm up the drawing just a tiny little bit, but then it was still looking way too light. So I added in some gray everywhere after I added in some white gel pen details to really make its cute little eyes pop and give it some whiskers. But then I went ahead in and just darkened up the base fur to make sure it looked like the right color and was really reading raccoon. And then after that, I was finally able to add in the last little gel pen details of the fur texture. I labeled it drawing number 31 and here it is. So today we drew the whale, the luna moth, the iguana, the horse slash makeshift unicorn, and the raccoon. So let me know which one you liked best, the whale, the moth, the iguana, the horse slash unicorn, or if you liked the raccoon the best. I think they all turn out so cool. I think the iguana one definitely challenged me the most, but I think they're all so cool and I'd love to hear which one turned out to be your favorite. Here's the first page spread we've created and all of the animals we drew then. And here are all the animals that we're working on now. We can't forget the horn for the unicorn horse, but here it all is. I think this page spread is looking out so awesome and it's almost completed now. So comment down below any other animals that you think I should draw. Thanks for all of your comments so far and I'll see you in the next one.